Good afternoon, everybody. God bless you guys. Once again, declaring a very blessed and prosperous and healthy day and evening over you and your family. All right, the title of today's message is Sowing with Real Purpose. All right, Sowing with Real Purpose. We're going to talk about giving. Uh, right now in my ministry on Sundays, I'm doing a five-part series. It's entitled Divine Connectors to the Manifestation of the Blessing of the Lord or divine connectors to the revelation and manifestation of Christ in you. You hear me talk about this all the time, but if you've accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, that's awesome, that's amazing, and that's wonderful. God desires for you to live the Zoe life while you're here on this earth, meaning the God-type life, Christ manifesting in and through you, spirit, soul, and body, all the days of your life while you're here on this earth. Okay, that was the reason he, he gave Jesus, is that he paid the price for sin. Through him we have eternal life, and that eternal life can begin right here, right now. And the more of that eternal life that's manifesting in and through you, that's ultimately the manifestation of the blessing of the Lord, or the empowerment of God, or the empowerment of Christ in you. So when we talk about divine connectors to the manifestation of the blessing of the Lord, we're talking about specific works that the Bible has given us that cause Christ within you to come about and manifest in and through you. And of course, all of it's always rooted and grounded in love, led, guided by the Spirit. But the five divine connectors are one, study and meditation, prayer and meditation, communion, fasting, and giving. And we're specifically going to talk about giving, but not just giving randomly. We're talking about sowing with real purpose, okay? And you often hear me talk about first and foremost, sowing the word of God based on the principle of seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping, sowing the word of God, the most important seed in this entire universe, the most powerful and profound seed in this entire universe, the word of God that caused us to get born again, the word of God that created everything you see, all right? It's by faith that we understand this. Then there's the sowing of your time, then there's the sowing of your talents. The more you sow your time with God, the more that uh, your divine purpose will be revealed. The more time you spend with him, he's gonna show you who you are. You're gonna learn to live in and through him and your gifts and your talents are gonna manifest. They're designed to be given. They're designed to be used in this world system, all right? Um, but then we're gonna, the primary thing we're talking about is the giving of your treasure, all right? The giving of your money. And I believe right now, more than ever, this message is so vitally important because right now with what's going on in the world, and I, once again, the United States is going to be the last people to feel it, all right, to really experience the fullness of it. And I'm believing this nation is still going to stand against it, okay? But you've got wide open borders. You've got inflation. I mean, all of us are experiencing the tremendous increase in prices, okay? And you've got a lot of talk of now COVID coming back and who knows what they're going to do with that. I don't know if you follow what's going on in China or just different areas around the world with how severe some of these lockdowns are, okay? Uh, you've got all of these different things that are happening right now. And I believe one of the primary purposes of the enemy is to bring down the U.S. economy, to bring down the United States of America. And the last thing I want to see is people get caught off guard and for us to finally start to wake up and realize that once it's knocking at our door. So God has given us a foolproof system, a system of seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping. I know a lot of people right now that are struggling financially, okay? And the last thing they would say is, my God, you're going to talk about giving, sowing money? Right now, I can barely even afford to pay my bills. All right, I get that. But that's exactly why we need to develop our faith in this principle and immediately start operating in this principle. And whenever it comes to giving, okay, even when it comes to reaping, listen to what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11.1. 1. It says here in verse 4, he that observes the wind shall not sow, and he that regards the cloud shall not reap, all right? So yeah, in the natural, it's never a good time. There's always something. If that's the attitude that we take, if we're going to be moved by our natural circumstances, and we're going to look for the perfect time to start giving, I guarantee you the enemy will always bring something up in order to distract you and make, you know, just prolong it and get to it sometime, okay? He that observes the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. So we want to really come. That's why we have to develop our faith in it. And that's what we're doing right now. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
So I'm believing with all my heart that as you're hearing this, faith is developing and it's going to cause purpose. It's going to bring about a purpose on the inside of you to want to give, to desire to give. All right, now I'm going to read this here. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, this will be our core text of scripture, starting at verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. That's the, the principle of seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping. And specifically in this text of verse, he's talking about money. He refers to money as a seed. Verse 7, every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Well, what's the title of the message? Sowing with real purpose, okay? Sowing with real purpose. So Father, right now, I just thank you right now that we don't give grudgingly or of necessity, but right now the Holy Spirit is implanting true real purpose on the inside of us, and we'll illustrate that to explain what that means. And Father, with real purpose, we are willing to always give of our time, our talents, and our treasure. And Father, we know and understand that your principle of seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping, is infallible. According to Genesis 8:22, it will be here and remain as long as the earth is here. So Father, we thank you for that right now, and we thank you for open hearts and open minds and open eyes and open ears to receive everything that you have for us, especially when it comes to developing our faith in the principle of sowing and reaping, but specifically sowing with real purpose, because that's when we're filled with joy. That's when we're filled with peace. When we have real people, people when we have real purpose, we know that we know that we know when, where, and how much to give. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name. All right, so verse seven again, every man according as he purposeth in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Now, for the sake of time, just read the next couple verses. He clearly talks about money as being a seed. He's talking about planting, sowing the seed of your money. And he's saying, look, when you come to this place of really having it purposed in your heart, then it's not hard to give it all but we have to develop our faith in this. And if you really, really, truly desire to be a giver, God knows that you really desire to be a giver. I guarantee you, he will accommodate you. You will find it within you because God, God doesn't have a problem necessarily getting it to people. A lot of the times he has a problem getting it through people, right? But when there's real purpose, then you're always looking for opportunities to give. And it makes it so much easier when you know that you know that you know that this is where I'm supposed to give. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, he's talking about this specific grace. He's talking about how this church of Macedonia, how first and foremost, they gave of themselves. They had such a grace and such a desire to give. Their desire to give far outweighed even what they actually had in the natural. Other churches saw it. They envied it and said, wow, we desire this grace. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, verse 7, he talks about five graces. He talks about the grace of faith and utterance and knowledge and diligence and love. But he says, see that you abound in this grace also. What grace? The grace of giving. And if you really, really, truly desire that, well, you can develop your faith in it. Take 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Meditate on it. Look at it. Hear it over and over. Develop your faith and say, Lord, you know what? I truly desire to be this type of giver. Not necessarily so, uh, you know, I want to give first and foremost because I want to, 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 to bless people and help people. But yes, of course, I want to be in a state of expectation and anticipation for it to come back so that I have that much more seed to give. And in 2 Corinthians 9, it clearly says that we are supposed to be in a state of expectation and anticipation, ready and willing to receive even that much more back. Why? So we have that much more to give. And I love this verse in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 12. It says, for if there first be a willing mind or a willing heart, it is accepted according to that a man hath and not according to that he hath not. So like the woman with the two mites, right? She only put in, I think it was two pennies. All the other people Jesus was watching, they were giving, they were rich, they were giving out of their abundance, and she comes in and puts everything that she had. It was far less than what they were giving, but he said, this woman has given more than all of them because she had a willing heart and she really, truly desired to give. Amen? 
And that's where really we need to come to this place of, hey, you know what, even in this time, especially in this time where things seem to be tightening up, man, I need to step out into this and develop my faith. I need to take, develop the currency of the faith of Jesus Christ within me. Faith without works is dead and automatically I will start giving. Amen. Philippians chapter one. Ready? Uh, starting at verse two. Now watch this. We're talking about purpose, sowing with real purpose. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, even as it, it meet for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ready? Ye all are, you, you, I'm sorry, ye all are, you are all partakers of my grace. They were partners with Paul. They were partakers of his, his grace. As a partner with him, the same anointing he had on, on himself, they had on them. He says, now because you partnered with me, because you've given, you've sowed into this purpose, you are now a very partaker of my grace. And here's the thing, there's no strings attached with me. I'm not asking you to give to my ministry. I'm putting forth a principle and teaching. My partners in ministry know about this. We teach this, we practice this, we're heavily involved in this principle of seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping, and we wait on God and we have purpose as to why we wanna sow. I'm listening to a series right now from one of my mentors, and it's just awesome. It's on the wisdom of God. And as I'm listening to these messages, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna sow my tithe. I'm gonna sow my 10%. I'm gonna sow an offering, a seed above, and that what's the purpose? I wanna partake. I'm not purchasing. I wanna partake in the revelation of that grace on the wisdom of God. So there's real purpose. I'm excited to give into that. I know that, that that revelation is going out and reaching so many, 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 many people. So I wanna sow into that and be part of that because then when that goes out, that's all part of the harvest that I'm gonna receive back. I've seen this operate over and over and over again. I just saw it operate yesterday based on seed that was sown and yet another sizable harvest financially that came in. Amen, well, as soon as that comes in, what do we do? All right, well, we're designed to be, we're called to be a planter, a waterer, a reaper, and a distributor. I'm gonna replant right away. Take that first 10% right off the top. And 10% is just the beginning. When you get into this, you won't try to think about and think, oh, should I tithe or should I give 10%? You'll be looking to give 20, 30, 40, 50. Ultimately, the goal when you come to this place of having this type of grace on you, you're gonna to wanna to give 100% away of everything that you have. You're like, well, well, how would I be able to live? How could I, I don't know, you can't outgive God. You, it, it, it's, it's talking about, especially in this time of grace, I believe we're in a place where Amos, where we talked about in Amos chapter nine, where the plowman will actually overtake the reaper. And we're in, a, we're in a place right now of divine acceleration. I mean, you understand these principles and you're consistently planting your time, your talent and your treasure with real purpose, not grudgingly or of necessity. You've developed your faith in this principle. You've learned how to hear clearly. You seek God on where, when, and how much to give. Tithing is easy. Tithing is not a hard thing at all. In fact, now you're looking not just to tithe. I want to get the tithe in. I want to get the offering in my seed. I want to do the almsgiving, give to the poor. I want to do everything that I can possibly do for the kingdom. God has not only purposed it on my heart, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, you know what he said? He would not only multiply the seed, he would also supply the seed for you. Amen? So when you start to really develop your faith in this, faith without works is dead, and you're not moved by the natural circumstances, you know, I'm gonna start sowing. I'm gonna, in faith, start sowing, but I will say this, you have to develop your faith in these principles. As you develop your faith in these principles, a desire will grow, purpose will come, because the last thing you wanna do is give grudgingly or of necessity. Sometimes it's gonna be that way. Don't give up. Keep going, find that place where your purpose is. Find that place where you're being fed and say, wow, this is real purpose. This is something my heart is into. I have real purpose and real desire. And especially, especially in the natural when it looks like I don't have anything to give, that's the time you should give. And as purpose grows and develops on the inside of you, it's easier and easier. And God's word will not fail. His principle will not fail. That harvest will come. We're the ones that have to get out there and reap it. So Father, I thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. God bless you and have a good night.